This is just an introduction to the concepts that we're going to be using in rational equation graphing. So what I have on the left, if you look at this graph, it looks terrible, right? It's, it's a function that's actually split into three different pieces, and it has all these swoops and hoops in it. And then there's also things happening with intercepts and holes, and um, there's a y-intercept. And we're going to learn how to write a function that would match this graph, or vice versa. We're going to use a rational function and then graph it, all without calculators. And it's actually not too hard once you get a handle on the basic vocabulary and the way the equations work. So I'm going to go over those points now. Uh, first, I want to talk about x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Well, you should remember these from previous work with polynomials. Uh, let me just give you an example polynomial. Let's say we had, this is not related to the graph, okay? So let's say we had f of x equals, I don't know, x plus 3 and x minus 1. Okay, remember where our x-intercepts come from? They would be x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. Those would be my x-intercepts. Now, what's different with rational functions? It's like a polynomial with a fraction, right? And this is our polynomial not even changed. It's just I wrote it as a fraction divided by 1. Well, where are those x-intercepts? They're on the top of the fraction. So that's where we're going to be looking for our x-intercepts. We're going to be looking at the top of our rational functions. So let's, let's make a schematic of what this is going to look like. Here's our rational function. Okay, and it's a big fraction, and it's got factors all over the place. The x-intercepts come from the top. Okay, and let's just point out the x-intercept on this graph so you know we're all on the same page. This is the x-intercept right over here. Okay. Now, there's another type of intercept, which we've run into before. That's called the y-intercept. So let's put that guy on here, y-intercept. And that is, you guessed it, the intercept that's on the y-axis, right there. And the way you find that is you set x equal to 0. Okay, so these right here are your intercepts. Now, this, this unit is called intercepts and asymptotes. So there's these new things called asymptotes that we have to watch out for. When you have a rational equation, there are certain things you cannot divide by. Remember your zeros? If you divide by zero, you're in a whole world of problems because we haven't learned calculus yet. And you can see what's happening graphically as you get really close to certain parts of this graph, like this guy. It looks like someone tried to divide by zero, right? Your graph shoots up to infinity or down to negative infinity. This is called a vertical asymptote. And this, this function actually has two of them. Now, because vertical asymptotes represent someone trying to divide something by zero, these are on the bottom. Okay, there's my vertical asymptote. And you might have one or two or three or however many vertical asymptotes. Now, there's one more type of uh, discontinuity. An asymptote is a discontinuity because it creates a place where the graph is not continuous. See, it's hopping all over the place near those asymptotes. But there's another discontinuity here. Uh, where are we? Ah, there it is. Look right there. See that? That is exactly what it looks like. It is a hole in the function. It's a place where your function was perfectly fine until it got to x equals negative 3, and then it doesn't exist anymore. That's why we call it a hole, because it's just sort of disappeared. Now the hole appears on the bottom and the top of this function. Okay, it's in both places at once. So let's try to use this idea that we've just written here and see if we can come up with an example equation that would fit this graph. And let me just grab another picture of this. We're going to move this down here because I'm getting a little, getting a little, oh great, brought everything. That's perfect. Getting a little cluttered. So I want to know what equation might produce this graph. So let's go through it and kind of figure it out. Let's say f of x, and this is just going to be a guess. Let's say f of x equals this big fraction. What goes on top? X-intercepts, right? So this, I'll use the same colors I was using before. This is x plus 6, or the factor of x plus 6. That produced that x-intercept. So there's my factor of x plus 6 on the top of the fraction. And this bad little thing right here, that's a hole. 
um, and it's located at negative 3. So that came from x plus 3. And that's, that's a hole, so it goes on bottom and on top of the function. And then I have some vertical asymptotes, right, over here and over here. And you can see what those come from. Those come from x plus 1, it's the vertical asymptote on the left, and x minus 3 is the vertical asymptote on the right. Now, this, this equation that I wrote is a good first guess, but it's not complete because I haven't included anything about the y-intercept. Okay. We need to check the y-intercept. So let's write this equation out as if I'm finding the y-intercept. Remember what we do for y-intercept. We set x equal to 0. So I'm going to say, okay, what is, what is all this equal to? It's 6 times 3 divided by 3 times 1 times negative 3, okay, which is 18 over negative 9. Oh, well, you look at that, negative 2. So this actually works out. My y-intercept matches, uh, and everything else already matches, so this is the equation for the graph. The more important part is for you to get the idea of where these different pieces of the graph live in the equation. So I would, I would rely on this. This is a great schematic for you to memorize. X-intercepts are on top, vertical asymptotes are on bottom. The holes live in both places at once, the top and bottom of the fraction. But it has to be the same factor, like you see here. I had this x plus 3 over x plus 3.